a spontaneous team with rare talent and an iconic shirt on its back, a legendary coach. There was no doubt that all the elements were there for this Dutch team to triumph at Euro 1988. A stunning success in the form of revenge for an entire nation. For as surprising as it may seem, this victory remains the only international consecration in the history of the Dutch. A look back at the Orange's fantastic run to the 1988 European Championship. But first, subscribe to Megafoot, the best of football and video. June 1988, the eighth European Championship in history was about to begin in West Germany. If the defending champion France was absent, the squads for this European Championship was nonetheless very attractive. In addition to the Germans and the Irish, the following teams will be present. Spain with Emilio Bertogueno from Madrid, Italy with Franco Baresi and a 19-year-old called Paolo Maldini, Denmark and their playmaker Michael Laudrup, England with their star striker Gary Lineker, the USSR and its 1986 Golden Ball winner Igor Belinov, and finally the Netherlands with their famous coach Rhinus Michaels. Known for his unrivaled tactical approach, he was the one who brought this total football ideology to Ajax Barcelona and the Orange in the 1970s. He had the onerous task of bringing his country back to the forefront of the European scene. The Dutch did not qualify for the 1986 World Cup and were not necessarily targeted as favorites for the tournament. This trend became even more apparent in the aftermath of their defeat by the USSR. They needed a win against England to qualify for the semifinals. The Netherlands could count on their rising star Marco van Basten. The striker who had been hampered by injuries throughout the season and came on as an injury time substitute against the Soviets was included in the Dutch 11 against the Three Lions. And the result is clear, a resounding hat trick for a clear victory. Better still, a turning point match as much for the player himself as for all his teammates. It didn't matter. The Orange went on to defeat Ireland and advance to the next round. Facing them is the host, West Germany. The opposition has a strong smell of sulfur, as the historical and sporting rivalry between the two countries is palpable. The Dutch still remember the painful memory of the 1974 World Cup final, when Beckenbauer and Gerd Muller's team denied Johan Cruyff's generation a major international title. Thirsty for revenge, it was with a knife between their teeth that they approached the semifinal. The atmosphere was electric. On the pitch, the match was all about penalties, one from each side. It looked as if the match was heading for extra time when the inevitable Van Basten scored the winning goal less than two minutes before the final whistle. A goal that sounded like a real relief for a whole nation. Everyone was happy to have beaten the German enemy, whom they had not beaten for 32 years. Ronald Koeman, in a state of hilarity, even asked Olaf Kahn to swap shirts. At the moment, some saw this gesture as a first step towards reconciliation between the two countries. It was not to be. The Dutchman walked towards the stands and pretended to wipe his backside with the German player's shirt. Although the polemic made some noise, it was quickly swept away as the final approached. In the Olympic Stadium in Munich, the Netherlands met their Soviet tormentors again. This time, the 25,000 Dutch fans in the stands had no intention of going home empty-handed. And even if it meant whistling their opponent's national anthem before the start of the match, the tone is set. The the match was stifling and suffocated by the stakes, yet it took a while for the game to get underway. In fact, and we don't know this yet, but it never really started for the USSR. Tactically, outmatched by the Dutch, the machine set up by Coach Labanovsky seemed to be stalled. It was even more so after Ruud Gellert opened the scoring on the half-hour mark. The rest is history. The Netherlands made the breakthrough with a unique goal by Marco van Basten. The number 12 volley, with its extension, balance, and purity, suspended time for a moment and from an impossible angle, pierced the far corner of the goal of the best goalkeeper of the day, Renat Desev. This flash of genius stunned the USSR, who were playing in their last Euro. Better still, it crowned an immense football nation that could finally boast of being on the roof of Europe. Let it be said that the generation that marched on Europe in 1988 was exceptional. It may not have been the best, but it was the only one to win. It was carried by one of the finest combinations of players in the history of football. The first was Frank Ricard, an all-around defender with an extraordinary tactical intelligence. The second, Rudd Gullett, was an explosive cocktail of power, speed, and technical accuracy all of which was extremely well diluted with an exceptional vista. Finally, Marco Van Basten, one of the most elegant strikers of his generation that football has given us. A man who became a true world star, to the point of winning three France football golden balls in the wake of this Euro. 
He was the symbol of the orange wave, a wave that will forever remain as one of the most beautiful waves that the Netherlands has been able to surf and that we, as football lovers, had the joy of experiencing. Is this team the best in the history of Dutch football? Tell us what you think in the comments. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you, to like it, to share it. See you soon for a new video. Ciao!